This is the Well-Centered Woman Podcast, a space created to provide practical wisdom for every faith-based lady influencer, creative, and entrepreneur who desires to better manage her emotions under pressure. In every episode, we discuss what it takes to stay centered and sane while operating in purpose using faith, community, and practical wisdom. Grab your journal, coffee, and tea, and let's start getting our emotions all the way together. I'm your host, Tanika Maria, and welcome to the podcast. Great day, great day, family. It is Tanika Maria here, and we are in the month of love here on the Well-Centered Woman podcast. I am absolutely excited and thrilled and honored to be here before you as we kick off the month. As you know, I'm a practitioner in this area of love. And so this is our first installment of the week. And our first topic on today, as indicated by the title, three things that a relationship will never do for you. And I love this quote by Deborah Folletta, if I'm saying her last name correctly. She says, you will never feel whole in the presence of your mate if you don't feel whole standing alone. You will never feel loved in the arms of your spouse if you haven't first learned to love yourself. Let me read this again as I sit here and look at these notes. You will never feel whole in the presence of your mate if you don't feel whole standing alone. And you will never feel loved in the arms of your spouse if you haven't first learned to love yourself. This is the foundational concept of what we're going to be teaching on today. Three things a relationship will never do for you. No matter how godly, fine, safe, anointed, a six-figure income, a six-pack abs, um, holy, well-spoken, responsible, good credit, look good on Christian paper, uh, well thought of in the social arena, your special person is. There are three things that that person, that that man cannot do for you. And this is going to be so important. And just transparently speaking from my own journey, I have been married once. I have now been divorced for about 17 years now. And in that 17 year time period from ending that 10, that was a 10 year marriage. And then I've been divorced 17 years. And within that 17 years, I've had several relationships and quote situationships. Now that I look at it in hindsight, they weren't really relationships. I've been engaged a few times. And so I've been on a journey, right? And trust, trust and believe, trust and believe. If I knew the things that I'm about to tell you here in this show today on this podcast, and for those of you who are listening to this on YouTube, if I had known 27 years ago, like I have to go back, you know, to when I was first married and even looking then uh, the reasons why I got married and at such a young age, I think I was 22 years old. I can't remember now, but at any rate, if I knew what I knew now, then what I'm getting ready to share, it's a very, very, very strong likelihood that my life would probably look a lot different. And that I wouldn't have gotten myself entangled in such situations that turned out to be snares at, to my heart. But then, you know, God always converts that pain to purpose. You know how we always say that, right? And he did convert my pain to purpose. And, and it turned into a podcast. It turned into books. And so let's dive into it because I want you, if you're in these situations, as we come into the month of love, you're going to see all this stuff on Instagram. You're going to see all these other podcasts and all of these memes. And you're going to see stuff on Facebook and on the news. But I want you to just really ground yourself, listen to this and know that a relationship, there are foundational things that a relationship will never, ever, ever do for you. It cannot and will not do these things. Number one, erase your insecurities. Number two, give you purpose. And number three, bring you healing. Let me say those again, and then we're going to break those down one by one. A relationship can never erase your insecurities. It is our responsibility for ourselves 
and before God to take care of these things between us and God, right? We got to take care of our insecurities, know our purpose and get our healing bit with God alone and not a man of flesh and blood. And if we don't do it, we're going to subconsciously attract and create codependent, messy entanglements every single time because we're looking for another person. We're placing these expectations on another person. So let's dive into the first one, insecurities. Insecure, to be insecure means to be uncertain or anxious about yourself on the inside. When I'm insecure, there's a lack of confidence. It means unstable. It means being rickety. So imagine a rickety chair. You know, you sit down on a chair and one leg is uneven and it feels a little unstable. Then imagine that same feeling on the inside. That's what insecurity is like. It's shaky. I feel precarious on the inside. I'm not certain about myself and I'm a little shaky and I'm insecure and I'm, you know, I'm still feeling so I don't feel confident and secure. Like, secure and settled in who I am within myself in full confidence in spite of all my flaws, my weaknesses, my ups and downs. I can fully embrace my strengths, my weaknesses because I know God is dealing with me and growing me and healing me. But when you're insecure, you don't have that confidence. And if you, you're feeling shaky and rickety and anxious and uncertain and unsure and precarious on the inside, then honestly, you're not ready for a relationship. And when I look back on my life, the times where, where I felt that way, if I when I got into a relationship, and see, you don't even know, it's subconscious. You have the feelings, but you're not articulating and not in awareness of it. And we're going to a relationship to alleviate that feeling. And a relationship just won't fix it. A man can't fix that inner deep level heart and soul insecurity. And so what happens is when we're like that, We'll start feeling inadequate within the relationship. It breeds a lot of jealousy because, you you know, you're more prone to be jealous in those relationships. Of course, it is low self-esteem. If I'm insecure, low self-esteem is a natural cousin to that, a byproduct of that. And so if you're feeling low and having a rough time and you're insecure within yourself and have that low self-esteem, you will place un unrealistic expectations on that mate, unrealistic expectations on that spouse to try to pump you up and make puff you up and make you feel better. And it's, it should never be a man's job to always placate, pacify, pump you up and make you feel good about yourself within yourself. Sure, he can give some degree of validation and encourage you and tell you you're beautiful. But if you're constantly always needing someone to tell you you're beautiful and pump you up and pump you up day in and day out all the time, something's wrong with that because no human has the capacity to do that, right? And so this, you know, that, that puts a lot of pressure on any human being, not just a man. And so an example of this, um, when your man doesn't ret return, give you your good morning text, when he doesn't respond fast enough, when you're, you're waiting and anxious about text messages and cute communications and it just crashes your whole world. First, that's attachment. There's some type of underlying anxiety going on that's a different class. But also, you know, it's a sign. It's a sign of insecurity within yourself and within that relationship. I remember when I was in uh, the dead end relationship that I wrote my first book on. So check out the show notes for Get Out of That Dead End Relationship Now, A Christian Woman's Guide on How to Get Real, Be Healed, and, and Move On. That was obviously a shameless plug. But in that book, I remember when I was in that relationship with that former pastor and I was just living for my good morning text. I wanted that good morning text. And when he was late on my good morning, because see, mind you, there was very little else in that relationship that was substantial. And so when he wouldn't text me or call me every day, that would just ruin my day and just set me up for a disaster. That showed me something about myself, about the nature of the relationship and just how much of my self-esteem and my day was caught up in this relationship. And so with that, we want to Make an appointment with that pain. I got them had, you know, when you're in that place, it's about making an appointment with your pain. Make an appointment with me, myself, and I, and God, because it's my responsibility. No man is responsible. No man is responsible. Excuse me, I had a little error there to puff up 
my wavering and wobbling self-esteem. No man is responsible to fill our empty cup. No man is responsible for um, all of this emotional work that we are looking for and looking to do within a, uh, for a man to do with us in a relationship. And no matter how much encouragement, affirmation, uh, support, a man cannot change, help you change the way you see yourself. Like a man can give you all the affirmation, validation, give you all the accolades and all of the attention in the world. But until you can receive it and until you can really believe it between you and God, it's not going to do anything. So we're always going to the outside. I'm looking for that dopamine hit of attention. I need that dopamine hormonal hit. It's the same thing like social media. Like if people don't like my post, now I'm drug out for the rest of the day. It's the same way like in a romantic relationship. I'm just trying to get that attention and that affirmation from a man to fulfill an emotional, emotionally empty cup. And so the key thing here, and again, we're on point number one. I'm just in point number one. No human, hear me well, no human can give you self-worth and value. You receive that from God and you must believe it and believe it first and foremost before you get into a relationship. Uh, and you got to, whatever you need to do to get there, therapy, coaching, counseling, reflection, journaling, reading books, YouTube videos, whatever you need to do to increase that self-awareness and to begin your healing process. Because remember, again, no human being can give you your self-worth and value, no matter how many compliments they get, give you, no matter how much attention they pay you, no matter how many dates and dinners and phone calls and text messages. If you're still empty, that man can't fill that cup. That's between you and and God. So number one, we said, we're talking about three things that a relationship cannot do for you. Number one, it cannot erase your insecurities. And number two, number two, a relationship cannot give you purpose. And of course, we know the quote by Miles Monroe, when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Seeking a mate and seeking to be married should not be obviously our sole purpose in life. And a lot of times and I've seen it where we're, we're talking like we're walking in purpose. I'm doing my purpose. I'm about my bag. I'm getting my hustle on. But it's still some ways attention seeking. And we're not really doing the work of that. We're still trying to get relationships. We're still trying to get attention from men. You see a lot of thirst trap pictures on Instagram along with all the hustle and the glam, right? And so in that process we are not to abandon our purpose or do some type of a pseudo purpose and, and the whole time behind that we're still seeking for attention don't abandon purpose for the sake of a relationship and i see a lot of this all-consuming search for a spouse companionship to the exclusion of god and purpose it's like when i'm married it's so much of it out there it's just almost hard to look at and what, if the sole purpose of your life is to get a relationship, then what do you do when that relationship falls apart? What happens when the relationship hits hard times? What happens when the sex isn't good? What happens when the attraction diminishes? What happens when it starts to get old? Then what are you going to do? And so it's about surrendering to the purpose first because your purpose is eternal. Purpose is eternal. Your purpose, the reason why God created you, outlives marriage. It outlives all of this external stuff of the world. Your purpose and why you're here goes beyond having a man, right? It outlives marriages. It outlives jobs, friendship groups, all the externals. Purpose is eternal. And so the question to ask is, okay, who am I at my core? Like, how so ask yourself okay how am i doing what brings me joy right what do i need today how am i feeling today what makes your soul happy like think about these questions like as you're listening to to me on this podcast and listening on youtube what is it that makes your soul happy what, and this is for my ladies, what does it look like for a man to truly honor, embrace, and cherish you? What does that look like? And how committed are you to you? 
How committed are you to you? Do you keep your promise to yourself? And do you stand up for yourself? Now, as, we, as I said these questions, look at it from this light. You don't, couldn't answer those questions right away. They require thought, right? But on the other hand, we want a man to know the answer to all of these questions, validate us, give us attention and affirm us and give the answer to these questions. We want a man to listen to us, cherish us, send us our good morning texts, call us, take us on dates, spend quality time, answer all of these soul questions, and we don't have the answer ourselves. So never expect another human to do for you what you're not willing to get the answer for for yourself. We want that man to speak our love language, but we don't know our own love language. We want a man to answer these questions and we don't want to answer because we're too lazy to sit down and think and do the self-awareness work. We just want to consume content on social media. Listen to me. I'm glad you're listening, but I want you to do the work, right? We, we're not loyal and committed to ourselves to do our internal heart healing work, but we want a man to be loyal and committed to us. Come on, somebody. Come on. I know I'm saying something. A healthy and wholehearted woman, and again, this is just point two, never expects another human to rescue her or to do for her emotionally and spiritually what she will not first do for herself. Let me turn my head and say that again and look at these notes and repeat this sentence. A healthy and whole woman, my sisters, never expects another human to rescue her or to do for her emotionally and spiritually what she refuses to dig deep and do for herself. Amen. And, and when a man sees that you're willing to do your work for yourself, he will show up. He will step to the plate or you're going to attract a man who's already done his work. So the choice is up to you. So repeat after me. I am a whole hearted woman. I am a whole hearted woman. I'm walking in my purpose and I am self aware of who I am. So number one, we said a relationship that cannot erase your insecurities. And number two, a relationship cannot give you purpose. And so this is so important for us to learn this and, and, and embody this in, no matter where you are on your journey to really learn yourself and give yourself that attention, that validation, that affirmation. You receive that between you and the Lord so that you're not always looking for it from another human being, be it a man, other people, social media, get, getting the dopamine hit in your brain off likes and comments. Learn that within yourself without social media and without a man. And this is a quote that I've heard from one of my mentors. She said, when a woman is needy for a man's love and attention, hear me well, when a woman is needy for a man's love and attention, it is a clear sign that she has neglected herself, right? It is a clear sign that she has neglected herself. And so when we give ourselves the love and attention that we need, it naturally increases us. It naturally elevates us. It gives us that confidence. It gives us that certain level of attractiveness. It makes us glow and we're more apt to attract that healthy love into our lives. And so this is a question I want you to ask yourself as we close out this particular point that a relationship will not give you purpose. When the lights are off, when you're alone in the house, if you turn your phone off, turn, you know, and you're quiet and you're not on Netflix and you're not scrolling and you're just, it's just you. How do you feel? There's no kids, no man, no distractions. You're not doing any work stuff. Are you okay? And if you're in that place where you, when you get quiet like that and you start feeling anxious and restless and shifting and shuffling and you can't even get still and you start being all agitated, then you're not even comfortable in your own presence. You can't even be alone by yourself comfortably because if the thought of being alone by yourself makes you like that, that is a sign that you have soul work to do. And I love this quote from Mark Twain. Here's the quote. The worst form of loneliness is to not be comfortable in your own presence. So the thing is, we have to learn to be comfortable in our own presence. Now is the time to really get rooted, grounded, 
fixed and founded in the love of God, be able to sit quiet and alone with yourself and have peace and be calm. And you bring that with you, that level of calmness and wholeness with you within the context of a romantic relationship, instead of striving for love, instead of feeling all needy and and wanting that affirmation and that validation. And don't get me wrong, that attention and validation of a man is a good thing, but it's good when it comes when you're already healthy and full, but it becomes dangerous when you're not full emotionally, when you let your cup run dry, and when you're looking for him to do something that you haven't done for yourself. So the thing is, my sisters, and then, you know, listen to me like I'm Auntie Tanika, your sis, you know, establish this between you and God first. Surrender to a season of healing that relationship between me, myself, and I, and God, right? And so the next thing I want you us to look at real quick is the third point. A relationship cannot bring you healing. A relationship can't heal you. And I think there's some myth surrounding that. I've heard, you know, of course, we 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 come into a relationship. We're not going to always have it together. And there will always be areas in our hearts and in our souls that being in a relationship will expose that will need healing. But at the same time, you don't go into it looking like this is going to my end all and be all. And when I get into this relationship, I'm going to, you know, he's going to we're going to heal each other. Mm mm. He was going, no, 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 no. That's not a healthy way. No human being can heal you except Christ. And you work with him. You are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. He begun a good work in us and he's the one that's going to perform it. Not your mate, not your spouse. Now that person can be a part of the process. God can use them in that process, but they are not the ones that heal you, right? Your 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 significant other can walk along beside you, but the healing ultimately is between you and God. And so we cannot go into a relationship needy and all looking to be healed. And neither, here's another thing, Going in a relationship, trying to fix, help, heal, and deliver a man. Being Florence Nightingale, thinking we're Jesus and doing all of this work. I'm going to carry his burdens and carry mine too. And I'm going to heal this wounded soldier of the Lord. And we're going to ride. That was one of the mistakes I made. So I have that chapter. I forget what chapter it is in my book, but it's, uh, you are not Florence Nightingale. And so what I was doing was projecting the areas of my life where I needed to be healed. Instead of working on myself, I was looking at all his areas and where he needed to be healed. And so in my mind, in my weak and wounded mindset at the time, because I wanted to be married so bad, and because marriage was the idol and on the throne of my heart, I wanted to fix, help, heal, and deliver him so that we could get married. That's a whole nother podcast right there. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. Little did I realize that I was the one that needed to be healed. I was projecting all of that energy towards him and helping him heal and get his life in order that needed to be in my life. Only to find out seven years later, here I am left empty handed, still with nothing to show for it and a dead end relationship. Don't let that be you. So again, we're not coming into a relationship needy, thirsty to be healed. Neither are we coming into a relationship trying to fix, help, heal, deliver, and be Jesus to someone that's not wanting that help, right? We got to own our own lives. Women, let's remember, we are helpmates, not a healers. Men are to be husbands and not a healer. And no human, again, can fully and completely heal another person emotionally because we're still wounded works in progress ourselves. And if we're going into a relationship looking like this relationship is going to be the completion of my healing, or I'm going to come in and I'm going to help them heal, there's going to be some letdown. So again, we come along aside, uh, aside each other. We pray for each other. We support each other in the context of a healthy relationship. But that relationship and that just putting that pressure on that other person to heal is, a, is not a good expectation. So that is a wrap, folks. Three things that a relationship will not do for you. It will not erase all of your insecurities. It will not give you purpose and it will not 
heal you. All of these things, all of these issues are between you and God and not a man of flesh and blood. And if you're in that place right now, and trust me, I've been there, no judgment here, honey, but what, but you're seeking that attention, that affirmation, that comfort, love, sex, a lust, but you're still not willing to do any deep inner healing work then you're not really ready for a relationship. You're, it's in a place of sort of wasting time. It's in a place of when you're just dating for, I hear dating and on websites for dinners and dates and attention, you're not really serious about, you're going to attract a low level type of a situation. That's just another distraction, another rebound, another thing to keep you in cycles and loops, right? And I know where, where, what that feels like. And if you really, really, really want to be ready, and if you... I, you need to invest. You really need to invest in doing the inner healing work, whether that's coaching, whether that's count, some type of counseling or therapy, or at the very minimum, I encourage you to invest in yourself, invest in courses, invest in digital audios, buy books and, and watch videos or, you know, like what you're doing now, listening to a podcast or something of this nature that's going to help you in your journey. And to that end, if anything I've said in this show has resonated with you, if you see yourself in any of this and those soul questions that I've asked or the, the point in and, and point two about um, a relationship giving you purpose and the insecurities and all of that, then I highly, highly encourage you to grab today your uh, copy or to download Check out the Pain to Power Romantic Relationship Power Pack. And in this, we talk about, uh, it comes with a 20-minute session with me, so definitely that's a bonus too. But we talk about how to get out of a dead-end relationship with dignity. I'm out now what? Healthy dating and marriage prep. He's saved but still not ready. That's a special power teaching from Minister David Burris. Uh, ground rules for dating and social media in the age of dating and relationships in the age of social media. The closure class, how to handle a breakup like a clean queen and letting go of the past, sex and soul ties. This is six hours of powerful teaching along with a 20 minute session with me where we can just chat about the issues of your heart. Or you can go deeper with me in this area with private one-on-one -on -one course, my whole soul relationship uh, power pack or relationship course, where it's two months of intensive one-on-one -on -one with me. And we go deep in the areas of the heart. Again, this is our soul ties and relationship coaching power pack. And this is two months of intensive coaching with me in the areas. And this is for you if you are in a relationship transition. Definitely, definitely check out the links in my show notes so that you can sign up Follow me on Instagram and on YouTube. Leave a review and feel free to email me at Tanika at TanikaBreeden.com. That's T-O-N-I-K-A at TanikaBreeden, B-R-E-E-D-E-N.com. Let's stay connected, fam, and I'll be back out here again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining me on the Well-Centered Woman podcast. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, subscribe and spread the word. Don't forget, you can gain access to more resources in your journey to emotional mastery by going to the episode website and checking out the show notes. Until next time, this is Tamika Maria right here in the journey with you, keeping those emotions all the way together.